Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Body Meets Mind podcast. I am Paulie Tommy. Always a pleasure to have you on the show, kind sir. Mate, it is. It is always a pleasure. And uh, I feel like I often go along and say something after that, but today I'm not going to. Good on you, or just you. You uh, Exactly, just <laughs> And today we are going to discuss something which is, which is really cool and it's something that I definitely have suffered from many times over. In fact, I know I don't know many people who have it um, and, I, and I, I, I'm inspired by the people that, that, that do go ahead and take this action. So without any further ado, the title of this podcast really is about drawing and bridging that gap between inspiration and action. And it's something that uh, is so important to me historically because I am a big victim of bright and shiny object syndrome, you know. I have been in the past and on occasion I still am, you know. I hear some incredible um, paths that I can take, a juncture in the road, and do I take right or do I take left? They're, they're, they're all so incredible and I can immerse myself like, yeah fully in the subject matter because I get so excited. And then I hear that there's a, this other thing that sounds just as cool. So I immerse myself in that subject matter, but ultimately when it's all said and done, a week's gone past and I've just kind of, you know, internally mentally masturbated without actually doing anything. Yes. Yes. And, you know, you know, I think this, this, this is a, a wonderful aspect and, and branch of the, of the tree of, of what our podcast discusses. Yes, we go into philosophical ideas, sometimes esoteric ideas, but we, we always, uh, or I shouldn't say always, but we do venture back towards just the, the nitty gritty, you know, pull yourself up by your bootstrap stuff. Like how is, how are you going to optimize your life and, and, and have the success that you want? Mm-hmm. And I think you, you need both. Again, this is a dichotomy. It's not a black on white, which one is better. It is a, you need to be inspired. You need to learn. You need to reflect. You need to pause. You need to think. You need to network. And then you need to do the thing. And yeah. you need both. And it's it's a constant balancing act. So I'm excited to get into it. It so is. And, and it's so fun. And uh, like I, I get a fire within me to be able to philosophize about uh, certain things. And this is why we started this podcast, you and I just loves being able to dig deep into subject matter. But what I've found over the years for myself is if I can refine a subject down to its simplest form, that is the, the key. That is the, the key to the other side for action. That is the key to the other side for digestion. And that is the key to the other side to be able to communicate what it is that you're trying to say. Yes. Yes. It's, you know, and philosophy is, it's, it's beautiful and it's important um, and self-reflection, you know, is important. Um, but we also need to have the awareness as to when it started to spill over into uh, just rumination, you know, and there has to be a point at which, you know, and this comes up in the clinical world all the time, you know, and in, in the therapy space. In the very beginning, the doing is asking for help. But if all we're doing is constantly going back into your past um, and and ruminating, we're not getting anywhere. And so what I try to tell people is that understanding your conditioning and your projections and your childhood and so forth is good for context Mm. so that we can refine and tailor a life that excites you. In other words, something you're headed towards. And, and, and philosophy is very, you know, when when you were talking before, dude, I, I, um, there's a meme of um, of uh, the Statue of David, you know, thinking, oh, no, no, kind of obviously can't be in the Statue of David. Um, just a, a great philosopher, for example, like thinking and going, oh, what is the meaning of life? But, and next to it, there's a there's just footprints of another statue that just went out there and lived it. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you kind of need both, you know. You do. I mean, I, I, I love what you said uh, there about, you know, drawing on your past for context, drawing on where you've come from but it's so easy to like you said to ruminate and philosophize and continue to I suppose embellish a story that you've had in the past over and over and over again and I feel um if you continue to do that for a long period of time that just amplifies this non-action because you get stuck in this 
very exciting narrative that is, you know, the philosophical, um, you know, uh, dramatization of, of a topic, but ultimately it's avoiding what we're trying to achieve, which if it's not pure philosophy and just rumination, then it's action, right? It's like, right. what are you going to do about it? Right. You know? Let's use an example, Tommy. Give, yeah. give me an example perhaps of um, what, what's come across your, uh, your field of work or, um, you know, what's, what's happened in your own personal life where you could take path A or path B. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, firstly, I want to empathize with people because, you know, I, I'm so, um, uh, I probably come across as very assertive here, uh, because I've made these mistakes for years, you know, so I, I ruminated and I, I went a little bit insane, you know, especially in 2018, I went heavily into my past to try to understand myself without having any kind of tether to, to, to earth. So I felt like I was just drowning in an ocean um, and chasing my own tail after a while. And so what I always try to tell people is that, you know, hey, analyze your dreams. Let's talk about your dreams. Let's talk about your past. Do some sort of solitude practice. You know, people out there are doing all different sorts of psychedelic journeys and stuff as well now, you know, as that becomes not only increasingly popular, but uh, uh, decriminalized, you know, and Australia will follow very soon. Um, but do it all the purposes of living a more fulfilled life. Because if you don't, if you just go out there and swim without a life jacket, you will, you will drown. And a perfect example is I remember speaking with a client who was trying to understand her past to heal from a kind of pain, pleasure, um, toxic relationship, you know, and we would, we would, we would do some work because I never want to tell people this is how to do therapy. I want people to feel like it's their own exploration well, and that I'm just, there if they want me there. <laughs> um, but uh, it started getting to the point where certain assumptions were conflicting with others. In other words, well, well, mum's, and I'll, you know, I'll just give you a very tangible example. Mum said this to me at 11. So maybe this is why I may be in C, but then at the same time, dad said this to me when I was 12. So that conflicts with that. And, and what you, what you were talking about before is very, very true in that Whatever the story is, as long as that is empowering, then then we're off to the races. Wow. And going back into the past for context is so that we can edit the story to make one that no longer limits you and turn it into something that empowers you. So if we go back and we find a couple of experiences that we believe may or may not have led to a limiting belief, yep. none of this is is scientific. And I mean, the science is good in psychology, because it, it looks at correlations and associations. So we know that, for example, um, children, uh, that there's a really great study which looks at adverse childhood experiences. And the more childhood trauma you've experienced, the more likely it is that you're going to have a wealth of issues at, in adulthood. So, we, so there is science behind this. But in terms of at the individual level, we go, well, mum said this to you when you're 12, therefore your issues with money are 100% associated. We can't ever say that. What we need is to extract the story that was limiting and then change that story. <laughs> so it, it is a lot of bit of play. And that's why I say at the end, it's like, if you have a kind of somatic feeling that that resonated with you, that's enough. And we can, we can work with that. Yeah. It's kind of like an anchor, isn't it? Mm. It's like a starting point for you to be able to reference. And then you're like, okay, so I can identify that this could have contributed to my mindset with something or other. Yep. Um, now that I have that reference point, let's create another story to, yes. um, because I mean, ultimately life is just comprised of shit we make up. Right. Yep. Um, so we might as well make up stuff that is going to be advantageous for our, for our future. Total laugh. And, uh, which, you know, getting back to the topic at hand, which then kind of, um, you know, leads us to this, this anchor point. How can we change um, something that our mum told us when we were kids to something that we can actually take advantage of and actually take action with today, you know? Um, you know, let's use people's association with money. Sure. Um, I feel like... I grew up in a household where my, ma my mother always felt like 
we were in a, a you know a struggling um you know financial situation i mean I, uh, being an adult now looking back i don't actually feel that that is the case but it's irrelevant yes. what the, the rational um observation of it of it is now it's mm. the uh, emotional imprint that was That's was right. placed so it's like how does that spawn or how does that plant seeds in my mind and then how do they spawn as an adult and how do they manifest when it comes to day-to-day -day life looking for sales everywhere um you know um thinking that you are going to struggle in every aspect of your uh, your financial journey so how do what do you do about being able to change that story so you can actually have a uh, a, a greater um relationship with your finances yeah, well, I mean, you know, you, you you hit the nail on the head perfectly, man. I think that that's that's where you can start to get some uh, awareness as to how the past experience um, did impact your life. It's like, do we know it was this thing, this thing, or this thing? It's like, well, it could be all of them, but if it was, you know, to 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 use your experience, it's like it, I have a real issue with money. Let's say, for example, sorry, someone listening got a real issue with money. Um, I was raised in a family where, you know, it was hard to make money. The belief that was set in was it was hard to make money. Now, sometimes those beliefs are true. If you grew up in the Great Depression, as our grandparents did, that was a belief predicated on the truth because it was really hard. People were eating lard sandwiches and everything, you know? Yeah, 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 totally. But if it's still holding you back, irrespective as to whether it was the objective truth or not, we're now looking at in the modern world, and you'll be able to tell what, where the limiting, where the limiting belief came from, or the intensity of the limiting belief, to the degree that you acting in an alternative way is creating a prevalence of resistance. Mm. So, if your mum said to you, or your dad said, you know, children are meant to be seen and not heard, um, and you grew up and you and you say to to to, to, to Paulie or Tom or whoever, I really struggle with confidence. And we're like, okay, what the hell's that? You know, we, what do you mean? It's such a broad thing to say. It's like, is it confidence playing footy? It's like, oh, well, they can play footy. And then they get to the point where they want to tell us how they really feel. And there's a giant blockage there. Well, there's a very strong correlation between when your dad said children are meant to be seen, not heard, and you being unable to use your voice. But the way to change this after you receive the context is – Baby steps. You know, I think mm. at the end of the day, mm. we don't have to complicate things that we know to be true intuitively. Mm. And it every every journey to the top of the mountain starts with a single step. You know, that's just the truth. And ask for help as much as you need along the way, but that's how you're going to get to the top. Yeah, and I think we've 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 discussed this and we've used uh, this strategy in other discussions, but it resonates more than, than ever if you're trying to change a, a deep-seated childhood belief that has kind of served you because right. you've survived and you've created an identity around this and you've probably really, really um, thrived might, might not be the, way, uh, the right word, but what you have done is you've succeeded in life to bring you to uh, to that, you right? And it's validating because you're here, you're alive, you have relationships, but ultimately you want to go in a different direction. So, um, you know, it's like in order to almost like uh, create a different path, you need to uncover the murkiness of what's been going on in the past and just create slight little, uh, you know, in, in, in Buddhism, they talk about just, uh, you know, uncovering the stains in, in your thinking and just slowly um, removing some of the blemishes before you can create new thoughts. Mm. And this, I feel, can, can kind of, uh, you know, translate to this, but it needs to be bite-sized components because yeah. you'll just get completely intimidated by the entire process. Mm. If you say, right, go out and buy a Jaguar. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, that's a like live Jaguar. A live, yeah, a live drive and drive it. Right. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Attack, glue a steering wheel. <laughs> yeah. 
Exactly. Exactly. RSPCA, we are joking. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, we're not. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, there's a couple of organizations where I think we have a hard time with that one. <laughs> this, this episode is sponsored by yeah. both the RSPCA, the Melbourne Zoo. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I think you're exactly right, mate. And I think this is where it comes back to balancing both. You know, and 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 we can talk about this this. Um, the, the polarity of, of inspiration and action in many different ways. It's, it can be a reflection and then an action, whatever it is, you know, but if you just act, you know, if you just do, you, you're essentially blind and you're just going to fall in the same pitfall all the time. You know, if you never begin, you might have the greatest understanding of how to go about something, uh, but you'll never get it done. You know, and, and, and you probably won't either because most of us learn by doing, you know, Tim Grover, who, um, um, was, uh, the, the, the coach for the mindset coach for Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan. I heard him speak on a book. We'll on the show. We should get him on the show. Yeah. We should get him on the show. He's, he's brilliant. He, he's, uh, he said he was talking about what you do after failure. Cause everyone knows how you need, you know, we all, we've all heard this before. You need to go for, um, failure and, you know, be okay with it and all that sort of thing. And he says, most people talk about how you have to get up when you're down. You know, that's uh, Rocky's favorite thing. And he says, I, like I try that. to tell people to stay down. It's a brilliant quote. <laughs> he says, I try to tell people to stay down, stay down there in the shit, you know, and, and really figure out why you are there. So that it doesn't happen again. Because if you just get up again, you'll make the same mistake. But if you stay mm -hmm. down there and you really feel the pain of insecurity and low self-esteem and rejection and, oh, and it happens a thousand times in 90 minutes on the jujitsu mats. That's why I really like it. You yeah. Know, like, oh, God. You know, it, it's, it forces you to really think about what happened. I'll tell you a story. There's a, there's speci there's a specific choke um, in jujitsu called the Das Choke where you kind of come in through the back, you can come in through the back, um, but there, there's two chokes that kind of look the same. One's an anaconda choke, one's a dust choke. Anyway, I was having some real difficulties defending the dust choke um, with, my, with my former coach who only got his black belt. Shout out to Kale, very, very dear friend of mine. Love you, Kale. Good day, Kale. Good day, Kale. And, uh, and um, I said, well, look, what am I doing wrong? And he's just like, look, this is what you're doing, you know, A, B, and C. And he submitted me eight times with the DAS choke in about 25 minutes and he cranked it and it was really painful. <laughs> but every time, and he, and he made sure to emphasize the, the, the squeeze every time I did the same thing wrong to really make sure, but I haven't done that since. I make sure not to bring my arm in more, you know, like I was doing a white belt level. <laughs> but it, it was painful, but I haven't, I don't think I've been, Dust choked since, you know, which makes it probably just haven't rolled with high belts, probably should, but yeah, it was a really good lesson. Or, you know, there were eight exclamation marks after that dust cup choke and you, you pay attention to exclamation marks. Yeah, exactly. exactly. You really do. Pain really hurts and it really makes us pay attention if we're willing to pay attention to it as opposed to just unconsciously running away from it. Yeah, I love that. And speaking of like, unconscious or subconscious behavior. That's the stuff that kind of really um, resonates when it comes to action shaking. Because if you can't identify what your subconscious thoughts, beliefs, and emotions are, then it's really difficult for you to be able to change the stories that you've created in the past in order to take that action, right? Totally, man. Totally. Um, you you mentioned this this idea about let's we'll paint a picture for someone here. So let's just say someone's been raised. Oh, that to, we'll use your story. Raised with that belief that money is scarce, it's hard to come across. If you found a way to, to access it, hold on to that. You know, yep. very easily lends itself to don't change jobs sort of thing. Mm -hmm. You find yourself going to garage sales and so forth. The way this kind of conscious subconscious um, belief paradigm plays out is subconsciously money is scarce and that's guiding your willingness to go to a garage sale. And you might say to someone, oh, it just makes sense. You know, if you can get a cheap deal, you can get a cheap deal. What happens poorly then and, and what has happened in your own life, I suppose, as you start to pull that subconscious belief with the understanding of the context around it, 
out into the open and go, oh, this is why I'm going to garage sales. Paint, paint the picture. Sorry, can you, uh, it was that, that, was that the que a question at the end of that? It was, but then I started to think I may have uh, answered it myself there. <laughs> okay. Because it, it, it resonated uh, very heavily with me. And then it's like, what are the actions that you take in order to override, you know, the the op shops and the garage sales? Right. Like actively go out and buy something full price. Actively go out and um, give money to, uh, to, to, to people, you know. Um, there are so many things that you can create an, um, an abundant mindset, not just let's, let's d depart from money from, for a moment yeah. and let's look at it an abundant mindset when it comes to anything you're trying to achieve, right? Yes, totally, totally. And you're exactly right. Like the actual thing in itself is amoral. It's like garage sales are good, you know, of course. Well, they're, they're not even bad or good, but yeah. why you go to one? Is it because money's really scarce and I need things to be as cheap as possible? Or is it because I might find a really good deal on something to give to someone I like? You know, that that's, that's you, 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 you're totally spot on. Yeah, yeah, cool. Well, it's, uh, it, it, it's super interesting. I feel like we've um, touched on some pretty interesting points as to how we can kind of draw that gap between education or inspiration yes and action is there are there any last thoughts that you want kind of want to add to that Tommy before we wind things up I suppose I suppose I just really love to um highlight the significance of the stories we tell ourselves I was listening to a um behavioral economist talk about um lying and the reasons why people lie and he says that normally so if you you know there's this there's this test where um you can get away with lying. So, you know, you, you roll a dice and, um, and you, you're attached to a polygraph test or a lie detection test and um, it lands on the number, on any particular number. And then the um, scientist or the experiment will say, oh, was, was that your number? You know, um, and people will say either yes or no. And people that are obviously more willing to lie will, will lie and people won't. And, and a polygraph measure, measures your physiology. So it's not 100% accurate, but if you start to get an increased heart rate, sweaty palms, the, the little, we've all seen that before in TV shows and movies. So we can predict lying in that way. And he says, we can predict lying when there's a, when there's a tension between um, wanting to get away with something, but knowing what the right thing to do is. Then what's really interesting is he says, um, and, and the whole thing was the more you get right, the more, the more money you make or something like that. Okay. Um, so people obviously really want to make that money, but they lie because there's that tension between what they want and what they know to be right. And then what they do is they flip the switch and they say, no matter how, so the more times you get this right, the more money will go to a charity that you really believe in. So now that tension is, is not necessarily not there, but it is messy because it's like, well, I know I shouldn't lie, but also lying is going to make these people really um, satisfied financially. I can help them. And it's virtually impossible to predict who's lying. So what's really interesting about that is that if we subscribe to an empowering story about how we can help other people or we can promote a cause or find purpose or meaning in something, the, our willingness to lie, deceive, a hey, sure, that, that's going to go up. But what I'm getting at is the tension to overcome personal challenges, perhaps it's laziness and mental masturbation and so forth, is going to be far, far easier because we're so much more willing to do something for something that we believe in. Mm -hmm. So the, the story that we tell ourselves, A, can be manipulated, B, can be way more empowering depending on how you say it. Mm. I mean, you know, for you and I, man, like think about why we're doing this podcast and all the conversations we've had. We, we love it, you know? We do. And um, uh, it's a perfect, I was going to draw, draw on that as an example. It's like mm. we are fueled by serious purpose and meaning for this podcast. And we, I feel like we constantly remind each other of that um, every time we get on to speak. And uh, mm. I feel like that's going to really, really um, resonate um, with people listening because we're not doing this 
um, for our own, you know, n- not that it's a bad thing, bro, cool. but, but, but we're not doing this for financial gain. We're not doing all because, because all of these types of things could come. Yep. Uh, they could be delayed. They could be instantaneous. They could be a, a great myriad of many things, but ultimately if the core belief as to why this is driving us remains uh, at the forefront of our minds and why we started this podcast, we'll keep doing this and we'll keep doing it over and over and over again because we love it and uh, we feel like we're providing value not just to you guys but to each other and to ourselves. Yeah. There's nothing better than than getting caffeinated and having a chat. You know, it's it's yeah. uh, it's good. I'd, um, I'd exchange all the camels in the world for it. <laughs> I'll give you four camels. For your eldest daughter. Yeah, for your eldest daughter. <laughs> Funnily enough, my my partner Siobhan was nearly traded uh, for a camel when she went to Egypt. How's that? <laughs> That's pretty good, man. Yeah, we'll have to get her on the show. I was like, God, I probably would have said yes to two. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, two good, good camels, you know, like, yeah. like top of the stock. Dude, like, have you tried camel milk? Yeah, well, exactly. Yeah, good humps. You know, I mean, it works. Get around. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Molly. Right, we'll wind up, but um, thank you, Tommy. Thank you, everyone, for uh, a good yarn. If you guys are struggling with taking action with anything, I encourage you guys to write in the comments below what it is that you're struggling with and where you feel that the, um, I suppose, the barrier is coming up, and we'd love to kind of um, start talking about that and have a bit of a yarn about it as well. Be great. Definitely. Definitely. All right, guys. We'll speak to you soon. Take care.